The first evidence of inflated glass that we know from a closely datable source about 40-ish BC are examples of blue tubes. The tube has been made probably by a method other than by glass blowing, but at one end, the bulge was definitely formed by inflation. There are a number of ways to make glass tubing without glass blowing. Egyptians, 1,500 years before glass blowing was invented, made glass tubing for jewelry elements. In this case, the glass is flattened, the edge is made larger in diameter, the edge is chilled by contact with the pincers, and gradually pulling outward, tubing forms and is pulled from the reservoir near the gathering rod. As the glass approaches a temperature of about 1200 degrees Fahrenheit, it stiffens. To cut the tubing, the tips of the pincers are held against the tube, it's tapped, and this breaks the tubing. At this point, the tubing is about 900 to 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Next, the end is heated, here in a modern torch. As the glass softens, at its edge, the open end begins to close. This is because surface tension is causing the glass to try to occupy less volume. And after the end closes, I blow into the other end and create the bubble. In one instance, the end was not fully closed and a little hole remained. Nonetheless, with enough force, the glass could still be inflated. And there's the teeny hole. 